Hi, this is Scott Picard with Verde Real Estate Group with today's home buyer tip. Joining us today is Scott Hansing from Inspect One Home Inspections. How are you doing, Scott? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing awesome. So Scott's going to help us talk about a topic that is very important to home buyers, and that is what are the common problems found on a home buyer's inspection? What are the things that you typically run into, and um, what do you think about them? So Scott, take it away. What what are like the most common things that you would find? Uh, first of all, every home inspection is different. We always find some things. Some houses are in great shape. Some houses take more time to inspect because there's more issues to find. If I was going to say there's common actual issues that we find, one of them would be the exterior envelope of the property. So a lot of times siding is uh, neglected, painting, maintenance of siding. Windows, same thing. Basement windows, for sure. They get neglected all the time. Um, garages, a lot of times people will spend a lot of money on their house and get it just the way they want it, but the garage doesn't get any attention. Jimmy Hoffa's body still there. The there you go, it's underneath, they, yeah. yep, it's back there somewhere. They negotiated um, that in the price and it's, <laughs> he's still there. Okay. So that's, that's one of the com more common, you know, exterior envelope things. Um, uh, furnaces that haven't been maintained, you know, you're supposed to clean and tune your furnace every year. Uh, most people don't do that. Right. So a lot of times furnaces need maintenance, they need a clean and tune, they need a, a professional to come in and, and get it running, you know, the way it should be. That's they have a high efficiency furnace that's not running very high efficiency, because high efficient because they, and this is me talking, not Scott, but uh, the uh, filter hasn't been changed in three years, and you know, the, the, the burner tray is all full of garbage. Yep. And, and they're not getting as many miles per gallon as they should be. Right, that right. Furnace. Because something yeah. I see a lot is people will um, they'll shut vents, right? They kind of control the heat, but then they're, the, the furnace isn't respirating properly. Right, know? right. The old homeowner balance by choosing which vents to open and right, close. Right, just arbitrarily, get, yeah. Correct, correct. Uh, I think another one would be small electrical issues. Uh, and when I say small, electrical is always important. I mean, we don't want anyone to get a shock. So you could be missing a 29 cent plate cover on an outlet, but it's a big deal if your child sticks their finger in there and ends up in the hospital. Right. So, so that's one that the health safety part of it is huge, but actually fixing it, you know, is inexpensive. But there's a lot of homes out there where there's do-it-yourself wiring, there's missing plate covers on outlets and switches and junction boxes. So that's another common a common thing that we find. And I think you, you mentioned something um, earlier that kind of tickled my, my brain a little bit. It's, you know, it really depends on the, the, the age of the, the housing stock, right? Like certain, like something that was built in the 1900s, you know, that has your know, knob and tube, electrical, you don't, don't need to know that, there won't be a test what that is. But versus, you know, something maybe that was built in the 90s where, you know, they had a lot of stucco and moisture intrusion problems because of the, the exterior, uh, the, 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 the construction standards that were used at the time. So, like, you know, does, 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 does the age of the house influence you at all? Like, Definitely. When you're, when you're looking at it, like... Definitely. Well, you're gonna, like maybe because you 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 have a checklist. Obviously, checklists are incredibly important. But there's certain areas that you might drill down a little bit more into, right? Sure. For for an older home, we're gonna uh, look more at electrical issues than we were maybe on a newer home that's been built in the last 20 years, in a community with good home and uh, good code uh, enforcement when the house was built. Whereas a home built in 1900, the electrical may have been updated two, three, four times since the house was built. And a lot of times it was Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob's my favorite guy. He keeps me in business. You know, he comes in and changes out outlets or he puts in uh, new electrical wiring or new plumbing and he doesn't do it correctly. So it definitely is based, you know, there's a lot of differences in homes based on their age. If you see the, the phrase reverse polarity, there's a picture of Uncle Bob uh, in the, in the uh... I've been thinking about trying to get one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it's it's so true because you know I've owned a lot of like old homes. I, I, I own a new home now, like, and and you look at just the the whole myriad of possibilities of things that can go wrong, and, and just uh, you know you'll, you'll probably hear if you're doing this long enough, you'll hear the words Federal Pacific when it comes to electrical panels, and you know, that was a company that. Uh, 
built some faulty electric panels. Right. I guess to oversimplify it, but um, you, you see certain trends and certain, uh, I guess, canaries in the coal mine, for lack of a better word. Yeah, so for instance, you know, stucco homes, we've been building them forever. Older stucco <coughs> homes that you're going to find in Minneapolis, St. Paul, you know, 1900s, 10s, 20s, 30s, 40s, even 50s, uh, typically have very few, if any, problems with the stucco in those homes. But we start getting into the 70s and today, and moisture intrusion in stucco built homes is a potentially huge issue and oftentimes uh, we recommend that they have a separate contractor come in and do testing Interesting. because it can be many thousands of dollars on a more contemporary home. Oh yeah, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. Correct. Right into the problem. For, for the stucco if yeah. there's moisture intrusion. So, yeah. so that's an old versus new home differentiation. Interesting, interesting. And then, of course, now there's, you know, most people are doing radon tests, right? And, and, yep. and um, you know, sewer line tests, particularly on, you know, the old homes in the city had, like, uh, the ceramic, right? The ceramic main right, clay line. tile. Clay tile, or... clay tile, thank you. Yep. And, you know, not, uh, you know, you know and, and that's, a, that's an add-on inspection, right? We send a specialist yep. out and, and they'll camera the line and stuff. But that could be something that could cost, you know, five to $10,000, you know. If, if, if there's if, an issue. Right. Correct. Right. Yep. So, I, I, don't, I mean, I don't know if these are the top issues, but, you know, they, they definitely um, strike fear into my heart when I think <laughs> about it. So, yeah, yeah, and that's something you typically would do on an older home, say 60s and behind, uh, 60s and uh, earlier. You know, if it's a 10-year-old home, probably won't have the sewer line tested. Yeah. Uh, don't ever want to say never because if the if the seller discloses they have backups or they have issues, that could be compromised. But that's typically an older home, you know, yeah. concern. So that's a that's become a common test that people are doing along with radon. Awesome. Or not awesome, depending on your perspective. But all right. Well, anything else you want to add? Well, I'm trying to think. Getting back to back to common issues, uh, I guess I do want to say that you know a lot of times buyers come to me, especially first time home buyers, and they're concerned about you know the roof and the foundation and things like that. One thing I do want to say is that major structural problems are not common issues that we find. You know, everyone's afraid that the structure is going to be bad or that the house is going to fall down. You know, they want to know that it has good bones. And the good news is most homes out there don't have major structural issues. Yeah. So just thought I'd throw that in there. Yeah, and I, I you know, and, and, and anecdotally, I, I think there's, uh, you can you can really um, scare yourself, right, into, into creating a lot of, uh, boogeyman in a house, but I think the, the key is to go through the inspection, have the inspection, and if there's hot buttons that, uh, or, or uh, things in the seller's disclosure that really scream, hey, you really should look into this further, make sure you do that, right? Or if you Correct. see evidence when you're doing the inspection that, hey, this, you know, this really looks like there was a backup here, even though it's not on the disclosure, you maybe, it, you know, you kind of owe it to yourself as a buyer to maybe investigate a little bit further. In the worst case scenario, you find nothing, no evidence that there's a problem, then you have, you can have the peace of mind of knowing that. And, you know, that's worth quite a bit. It shouldn't be a scary process. No, Let's no. It that way. Yeah. It's actually a good process, and most people, when they're done, are very happy they've had it done and they're very thankful that they got educated about the condition of the home and maintenance of the home and there's usually not huge multi thousand dollar issues that we find sometimes but not 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 in real often either and, and you and I've been doing this since uh, too long yeah yeah <laughs> I, a, a thousand years but uh, but you know you know there's I, I call those issues turbulence right we're on the airplane and sometimes we come up with some turbulence and we you know, the, the, the key is to have a good pilot or uh, pilot team that's you know, flying the airplane so you can just get through the turbulence and have a smooth landing. And reassuring. Airplane. Yeah, yeah. So if, if someone wants to get a hold of you, Scott, and learn more about you know, this or any other topic, how, what is the best way to do that? They can call me directly or text me at 952-707-1111. Or they can go to inspect1.com to our website. Awesome. Thanks so much. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me. You bet.
And I'm Scott Picard with Verde Real Estate Group. Like always, if you want to get a hold of us, the number is 612-600-8888, 612-600-8888, or 24-7 online at verde-realestate.com. We hope this content has been valuable. And like always, if you need further assistance, please let us know. Thank you.